Me? Hey everybody, welcome to that figure skating show, but make it live. Uh, make it live. <laughs> make it live. Uh, so we will be joined by uh, our special guest, Eric Radford, in a few minutes. But And we will be going into the bubble, giving you a BTS behind the scenes of what's happening at Worlds right now. But let's jump straight into it. Parachute program, we are fresh. It just happened. We are still thinking about all those wonderful programs we've seen. Let's get into it. Yeah, so that was a very interesting short program. What we expected. Uh, it's been a while since we've had all of these skaters competing on the international stage. Didn't know what to expect, but I did expect some ups and downs. We had some ups and downs. Uh, the small small metal podium, we had uh, Boykova and Kozlovsky in first place with 80.16, Sway and Han with 77.62 in second place, and in third, we had Mashina and Galiamov with 75.79. So I would say throughout the event, the Russians looked like they were the most comfortable in general. They've competed the most. They've had the most mileage, and especially these two young teams at the top, they look like they just came out and banged out the programs like it was nothing. And I guess you know mileage is a thing. <laughs> um, they they look trained and ready. Uh, Boykova and Kozlovsky, they were clean. They did all their things. I, are you? I'm. I mean, I'm still surprised that they are the ones who have the world record for the short program uh, i know that they uh, changed this uh this program to uh howling castle uh to like bring a little bit of joy but to me clean but it didn't actually bring me too much joy it was good but... <laughs> it was like i was like mildly joyful um i you know they do great stuff they're very consistent i don't i mean to think that they have a higher world record score than Morozov and Tra uh, uh, Velocizar and Trankov and and Swain Han and all of these legendary skaters. Swain and Han are still in it. They're that relevant. They're still that recent. They have a higher short program score. I mean, there are only so many tricks in a short program. If everyone skates clean, that second mark has to come in somewhere. And to be completely honest, I feel like this team just does not have that second mark to validate having – a world record score, uh, or, uh, the, the biggest short program score ever. It doesn't make sense to me. I don't, it does not feel oh, right in my gut. Bigger skating judging, not making sense. Huge gasp of intake of air. <laughs> <laughs> You're so sassy. So sassy. Uh, I love it. Keep it coming. Um, that being said, the things they do are very solid. And when I watch them skate, I never really wonder, are they going to land this? I kind of more wonder, are they going to stretch this? Are they going to finish this line? Are they going to look at each other a little longer? Maybe linger, maybe show me some connection. I'm still missing that from them. Um, I'm not knocking the skate. I think they skated great. I'm just saying big picture. Not sure. I fully agree. Swain Han, small mistake on her triple toe. Uh, they're still the class of the field. Like they're just, 
Yes. Yeah. 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 Tell I, me. Tell I, me what I, you're I, feeling. <laughs> I uh, I think it's after the triple toe. Just everything she does. I mean, both of them. They're so well matched. Again, they've been skating together forever, but they just have it. Just like I think right here we might see the shoulder Sweet. roll on the triple toe. Anytime she moves. Come on, come on, come on, give me that shoulder roll. I'm just waiting for it. I mean, you might not get it, but, <laughs> but you know, she stares at you. She stares uh, at the judges, like daring you to not look at her. Again, I've talked about how effective a blunt bang is. Everyone should get one if you really just want like, to. Just like, you know, just like one of these, just like, yeah. I'm going to look at yeah. you with my other eye. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there it is. You know, it's... Yes! Show the roll. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. There it is. The highlight. The highlight. Always the highlight. Oh, here it comes again. The king on the flip. All right, give it to me again. Oh. <laughs> you know, I I will say though, her fire was like an eight out of ten compared to what mm. we're used to seeing from her. In my opinion, you know, it looked it mm. looked a little like I'm gonna give you some fire, but I'm not gonna turn the burner up all the way. Um they, you know, they, they have been dealing with some injuries. Uh, he had surgery. Hmm. Would that affect them? I mean, they've come back from injuries and surgeries so many times. It kind of feels like the norm for them. Like they plan their year around surgeries every year. It's kind of how it feels. Uh, but I mean, they've been doing this forever. Like you said, I competed against them. My first season in Grand Prix with Kirsten, we competed against them in Skate America in 2010. So like 11 years later, they're still up there dominating so they've got they've got a lot of uh they've got a lot of chutzpah to rely on you know they they, they know what's up um i personally think they're gonna take the free but we'll come back to that uh moving on third place machina and galimov i actually i kind of like this i would i would almost give them the skate of the event esmeralda you know what? I would give it to you. Give it to them as well, not you. I mean, you get you get skated the, the day, even when you're on, well, even when you're not on the ice. Thank but you. yeah, you. I think because so many times when I've seen them, I've been so uninspired because they're very deadpan. Uh, I know they've gotten together not too long ago, 2017, I think you said. But they actually had uh, energy and like expression outwardly, which usually is like nothing so i really actually enjoyed this program uh and i've never seen a guy so tall get down so low he did so many like reverse uh drags including his ending position so uh i i concur with your uh, uh yeah, i agree with you that this was the best program of the some ice dancer notices there back <laughs> lunges wow uh, <laughs> they're you know what their their elements are exquisite they're amazing uh and they you're right they did show energy they still don't i they don't have that chemistry yet they were single skaters they still skate a little bit like single skaters but they're trying and you can see it and i respect it and i applaud it and i appreciate it so yeah thanks for your effort mm. um there were some other inspiring skates though yes uh right off the top uh canadians evelyn and trent um we haven't seen them skating since literally four continents last january they didn't skate at sectionals our virtual competition that we had here in canada or challenge uh because she was dealing with ankle injuries and i know also before challenge she was dealing with something with his arm or shoulder um right. but you know to not compete for over a year come out two worlds uh with so much expectations and you know not having any competition under your belt and skate a clean program uh i know their marks didn't really reflect that uh there was a duction somewhere i'm, I'm not sure where that was but yeah. um they skated amazing for their first time out and we haven't seen them in um, what it feels like two years yeah you know i i like their program i also really like his flow i mean i would i been working on it myself but uh i'm digging it i'm digging it i think they look good they've matured and they're every year we see them come into their own a little more clean things up express a little more i loved it another skate i really loved was ziegler and kiefer from austria um they they've another team that's been around for quite a while competed against them for years and they seem to in the last few years have really started to find their groove they came out there, they they skated beautifully, really strong, clean, short program. 
they're a team that's always smiling. They're, they're always happy to be there. And, um, you know, it's hard not to like them. They're wonderful people. And, uh, it's really nice to see it all come together for them. They, they scored well and they're sitting nicely. So happy for them, excited to see what they do in the free. Yeah. They always look like they're having fun. Now, what is your wow moment of this event? Uh, I mean, probably Peng and Jin, you know, that stumble off the top. It mm. really shook them and us all up. And um, it was kind of bizarre. And then her dress yeah. popping open on the side. Oh, I didn't know. I didn't notice that actually. I wonder that did that happen right after right after the fall? Because it looked like he. It was definitely choreography for him to pull her back. But it look, when I saw it, I laughed. I didn't mean to laugh to be rude, but it looked like he just like pulled her down. I I know she flipped, tripped on her heel, but when did the pop happen? Uh, I'm not sure when it happened, but I noticed it about halfway through the program along the side of her her dress that was split open, and I'm guessing that's the zipper. I would imagine the seam wouldn't burst that easily. Um, Kind of a bizarre program for them. I mean, they they held it together, but she was clearly shaken up going into the jump, and it took a little bit for her to get back into that program. I love their mm -hmm. skating, though. So I hope they really their, pull it together. Their transitions, the like, they're the closest for me to Sway and Han uh, in their transitions, like that beautiful transition into their uh, death spiral. Ugh like breathtaking. Uh, so it was really sad not to, to see them not uh, be able to perform at the level. But again, we have to give these athletes a break. They didn't even know that Worlds might have even happened. And like you said, the only people who are actually kind of trained for this were the Russians, and it clearly showed. Um, a little, another another kind of a weird moment for me was Della Monica in, in Guadice. Did I say it, Rob? Yeah. Guadice. I think so. I think so. Sounded good. Uh, at the end, they did like this mask cover thing. Uh, <laughs> they kind of look like, uh, I don't know if you know what a penitent is. They're like the guys who wear the pointy hoods. And, you know, as a black man, I was like, oh, <laughs> I cut out a little double take. But uh, I didn't, I, I don't get modern art. I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> expression is expression, Asher. You have to open your mind. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. Oh, it's so eerily quiet. Anyways, uh, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. I mean, maybe maybe it was an homage to masks. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, it's couture. Couture, Italian. It's, it's couture, yeah. yeah. Uh, also, they didn't have a very good open a Gucci store, store soon. <laughs> <laughs> they also didn't have a very good skate, so I'm wishing them good luck in the free program. Um, but do you know what time it is, Dylan? Uh, it's an exciting time because we are about to bring in a very special guest, the one, the only two-time world champion, three-time Olympic medalist, the most decorated pair skater in Canadian history, Eric Radford. Oh, give us a sign. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what an entrance. I didn't see you guys there. How are you? Good. How are you, Eric? Look at that beard. I'm loving it. You you inspired me, Dylan. So there You're you welcome. go. You're welcome. I, I have to say that you, what you guys, like all the points that you guys have pointed out about all the teams, I, I was just like, me too, me too, me too, me too. I, I agree with like everything that you guys were saying. Oh, great. So we don't need you here. Thanks. Okay, bye. No. Okay. <laughs> bye. <laughs> um, so before we get into the skating, let's just, you know, how's life? Tell oh, us a little bit. Um, to be 100% honest, life has, been, life has been a little bit challenging. I think that everybody across the board, you know, everybody I talk to, COVID starting to like get to people. Uh, the changing of the weather is very nice. Being able to go and spend more time outside is really nice. Um, I've been busy coaching, um, skating every once in a while, just kind of trying to stay in shape, I guess. Um, and working on music like I have been for like the last year. And how is music coming? Anything new and exciting that we can look forward to? <laughs> There's a couple things. Uh, I, I mean, I'm still continuing to work on my album, uh, still piecing it together slowly. Um, Got to come up with a plan about how and when to release that, but mm. Mm -hmm. very exciting. Are there very any songs exciting. dedicated mm -hmm. to me and Dylan? 
<laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Silence. Well, it's not, it's, we, we heard your answer. Silence was the answer, and it said everything. It was definitely. It, it's yeah. geared towards you guys when you wake up in the morning and you have a cup of coffee and you're watching the sunrise over like a mountain. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I live in Ontario. There's no mountains. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Blue Mountain. I don't know. <laughs> you can barely see Blue Mountain when you're right beside it. I don't think you can see it. It's more of a hill. It's more of a hill, and it's more of a mountain. hill. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So so hmm. all right. Life's life's going. So yes. Back to skating. Tell us what you thought about the event. First of all, I think like everybody watching it was just so nice to like sit and watch figure skating again and especially like at a really high level and in a very sort of high caliber event i totally agree with what you said about the russian teams they they look strong across the board and of course they've had the most sort of competition experience uh very nice to see shui and han i also did agree with you about what you said about their energy kind of being an eight out of ten when I, I went back recently and i watched their long program from worlds in 2019 and they were just like electrifying and they always are amazing, but I didn't feel the electricity this time. Um, one thing I wanted to point out was uh, Ashley Kane and Timothy LeDuc's side-by-side -side spin, where they do like a full split and they were keeping in sync. And that's one of the most incredible side-by-side -side spins I've ever seen and most difficult side-by-side -side spins. So uh, props to them. Uh, was super proud of Evelyn and Trent's uh, short program there. I feel like they're they're showing more maturity. I thought that was a great uh, piece of music for them, a great vehicle. Um, and to go out and kind of like, you know, skate a clean program there in that moment, was a, it's a big step. And you've been working with them over the past year. Yeah, um, I think that the commentator mentioned that I had done, I, I am one of their choreographers, but it wasn't for their short. I choreographed their long program, which we'll see tomorrow. I believe. And how how is that working with a team that you've competed against that, um, you know, Trent is someone who's been around the, the Canadian pair scene for so many years. We've watched him come up. Um, what's that like working with them? It's awesome. You know, and, and I love I love seeing a team like that that's, you know, kind of really breaking into the upper, upper like echelons of skating in the world. And you guys know it'll be the, the smallest details that make the biggest differences and i feel like that's where that's where i have a very good eye uh for those types of details and to kind of be able to try and pass on you know what i i think i learned in like the last few years of my career mm -hmm. because that's what megan and i were you know really trying to do as well is try to get those those little details and you know, when you give them a, just a little correction and then they go and they do it or like a little step and they do it just a slightly different way, but it just hits you in that way. Like it's it's so great to see. And I love seeing that type of improvement. And that's also what I wanted to bring up about Miriam Ziegler and uh, Severin. I could see more detail in the mm -hmm. small little movements. Like even when they, they connect arms and they lift their arm going into the twist, I was just like, that that's, that's new. Like that's a whole new level. Just that little move right there. Um, so I was really proud of them because I'm, I'm good friends with them as well. And it's nice to see a team like that, that, you know, works so hard and just has such great passion for, yeah, exactly. Right there. Uh, that has a team that has, uh, such great passion for the sport, just continue to push and improve and make those, those small steps, you know, climbing up the and ladder. still, and still enjoy themselves. It's so admirable to see a team kind of, you know, no, no matter what their season's looking like, they come back. They smile, they're gracious, and um, I don't know, such great ambassadors for the sport. Mm. Yes. I, I, I was gonna jump to Kirsten and Mike, uh, uh, but quickly, uh, speaking of people who really love the sport, uh, Zoe Jones, she and her partner, you know, had 20 days to prepare, and she is the oldest pair skater at this event. <laughs> Um, can you imagine starting like being in your starting position and you're like i have i've skated for three weeks i'm at center ice at the world championships like okay <laughs> let's go like it's almost unfathomable it's a no for but me actually, but yeah but i'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> but she clearly loves the sport so much <laughs> yeah uh, that, i mean that's some courage that's some courage that's some vulnerability right there yeah uh, and, and so heading back to Kirsten and, and Mike, uh, you know, 
we definitely had them in the metal hunt. Uh, they definitely belong there. Such a great trajectory from last year. Um, you know, with four con heading into uh, four continents, heading into uh, the final, and then preparing themselves for world. Un unfortunately, it was canceled. Uh, great skate ish. A lot of mistakes that took them down. Uh, what did you think about their performance and and, and you know where they're going to be headed for the free program? I think that it was one of those f a fight of escapes, and you know when I'm, I'm putting myself in their position. Um, you know, skating on a stage like that has such a particular energy. And now you're at Worlds and there's no crowd. So this is an environment that all of these skaters have probably never experienced. You're in a gigantic rink with no people. It's the World Championships. You may have competed a handful of times, but never like in this capacity. And I think that um, it was probably, I can imagine that, you know, they're trying to draw upon training that they didn't have. And they're trying to draw upon competition experience that they didn't have. And it just, you know, nothing was completely off, but everything was just a little bit off. And, you know, it's when you go out at a competition and you make those little mistakes, then you know how to not make them at the next competition. So it's like they just had to go out and like try and give it their all. And those little mistakes creeped in. On them and i think that's probably where it came from and i'm sure that they're probably disappointed but even from the short to the long i think that they're they're strong they're intelligent they're seasoned you know overall season competitors not this past season but they're going to be able to like you know i'm sure that they're going to come out and those little those little details are not going to be there those little um like inaccuracies aren't going to be there in the long program yeah, it almost looked like that short program was um, a first Grand Prix or an Oberstorf type skate, you know, like the program looked great. Just some little things that you would, like you said, normally work out those kinks as you go into the meaty part of the season. And um an unfortunate time, you know. I was, I was. It's funny that you said meat because I'm thinking of season, and then I went to seasoning, and then how no one is really seasoned or ready to be pulled out of the oven for worlds. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, not quite done. Put it back in. Put it back in. <laughs> um, I did want to ask your opinion before we get to some fun Eric type games. Uh, what are your thoughts on uh, on uh, Alexa and Brandon? I think that I think that they look great. You know, I think mm -hmm. that and you know, when you first heard that they were going to be skating together, you know, you could see that she was the, the, I think the stronger skater in that team and he was probably the stronger skater in the other team and when you take those two and you put them together, you you have an expectation and I think that we're seeing that you know, they they have a, a lot of um they have a lot of great things together and I think that when it came to their skate tonight, you can see the potential. It's just, again, first year team, uh, weird competition season. And um, I think everybody can agree though, like heading into the future that they're gonna be contenders for sure. Yeah, no, I love them. I think they've got a really fresh look and a lot of um, energy and speed and excitement to their skating. So I'm excited to see what they do. All right, enough on that. Let's move on to some enough of skating. <laughs> enough skating. Let's play some games. <laughs> Eric's favorite game, for those of you who don't know, is a game called Would You Rather? And he likes to ask questions that, you know, put you in a bit of a pickle. And he likes to watch you squirm when you don't know how to answer them. <laughs> so we... <laughs> he's a little sadistic, it's but we rude. love him anyway. As it's Linda rude. Would say. Yeah, yeah, as Linda would say. Sorry, Mo. Uh, it's rude. Um, so <laughs> we just have a couple. But so the first one is Would you rather have to compete with back to back free programs in a pair event or compete in the last group of women for the free? <laughs> you mean like me compete in the last group of yeah. women or am I a Russian, a 10 year old no, Russian? No, 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 no. You, you have, have your talent. Don't that try and take the talent of the that. Russians. You have your talent. Yeah, yeah how dare you? <laughs> yeah. Wait, you I, think you have an I avatar, saw... like a, a teenage <laughs> Russian avatar? <laughs> Do I get to use a joystick? Uh, I, think, uh, <laughs> I think that I would rather compete in the last group of the ladies because people would at least know that there was no hope 
in hell if you're ever <laughs> doing anything. Yeah, okay. You know, in a, in a pair yeah. competition, they may have some sort of expectation, but in that, I could just go out and probably, like, I didn't even have to jump. I would just try and enjoy the moment and perform for the audience and put all of my so you energy would, and intention into that You would take humiliation over pain is what you're saying. Humiliation over pain. I, I, I would be, in that situation, I would be more impervious to humiliation compared to... And, but what if, it, what if it was a situation where you would be humiliated? Like, you were supposed to be in that event. Let's the make it a little one, harder. But the, num the number one rule for uh, would you rather is no ifs. <laughs> okay, that's true. Fine. I'm still, okay. I'm, I'm right. still, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go with one long program <laughs> with killing myself on quads versus two back to back, with three lifts and jumps and twists fair, and everything. Fair, fair. If you pop a flip, it could have been like I was trying to go for a quad flip. It just turned into a single. It's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just I yeah. wasn't there today, guys. I See, just wasn't you know, there today. I, I, I know Trusova has five quads planned, but I would have six. <laughs> but I would only do zero. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here comes Eric Gravity. Has six quads planned. Yeah. My final, my final score. Was writing all sorts point. of things on your, your protocol, <laughs> like quintlet squad toe combo. This is the first lady attempting a quad axle. <laughs> She's just and really she doubles today. it, popping everything. Okay. Second, and also, uh, I'm a bearded Jackie, lady. I bet Jackie is yelling lady. at us right now to move on, but we have one more. <laughs> would you rather question? <laughs> all right. Would you rather? Come out of retirement to come last at your first and only competition of the season, or have the worst skate of your life be a reoccurring nightmare every time you went to sleep. <laughs> oh, dude, that's a really good one. I know, Jackie. I, I know. I'm going to answer quickly. Um, I'm going <laughs> to go with come out of retirement to come last at a competition. Ouch. And have a reoccurring that I'm having my worst skate. I think I would go with the reoccurring dream. Okay. Really? Mm. Yeah. There's something, I mean, a dream I know is a dream, but reality, I think we all know the difference right there. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> bro, really, wake it. I, I, would, I, would, I would, not away. If I chose A, I would probably end up having that reoccurring dream anyway. That's fair. So I may That's as well fair. skip That's the fair. reality and I will just deal with my own reoccurring dream without right. everybody else having to be a part. Very of it. practical answer from Eric Radford. Good answer. Yes. yes. Very practical. Yes. Okay. Yes. 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 Um, uh, so um, let's head in to the bubble life, the behind the scenes of what's kind of going on at World. Uh, with the COVID pastrami that's going on. Um, so Piper posted a video of her watching uh, Madeline and Emily this morning. And I just kind of want you to listen to how like quiet it is. Like when you walk into a club and realize no one's there. <laughs> no one showed up to my birthday. <laughs> it's like you said before, it's eerie. Like that is quite an expansive arena. It looks like an airplane hangar and no one is there. Like I, I know you don't know what that, that feeling is, but uh, you know, we are a sport that feeds off the energy of a crowd and especially at Worlds is kind of what you want. And then not having that, can you speak to how like feeding off like people's energy is so important and then, you know, trying to put yourself in the mindset of these competitors? I, I was actually curious and I was going to ask what you guys thought, because I think part of what makes me the most nervous is that energy. But then, like you just said, if you channel that energy the right way, it, it like fuels your performance. And when we were on Battle of the Blades, Asher, maybe you got the same sort of sense where there was no crowd and no energy, which was strange, but at the same time made me feel less nervous. So I was thinking that maybe for me, going out there and having just like you know, it's almost like doing an exhibition for some judges, you know, it would actually probably lower that anxiety and that nervousness and maybe make performing a little bit easier. Or maybe you just wouldn't, you wouldn't have that fuel and the, you know, 
everything would suffer because of that. Well, I mean, the thing with battle though, is a smaller rink and there's light. So it's not like you're looking at empty seats. This is like, this is, this is like a football stadium. This is big. I mean, my first skate America was about that full and that big of an arena. So I've kind of. Oh, was it Ontario in Ontario? Ontario. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah. In Portland, it was the same. Oh, okay. I guess two oh. skate Americas were like that. Um, <laughs> weird. Uh, yeah, it's. I guess it. I guess it's really your the attitude you you bring to it. But if you're the type of skater who feeds off a crowd, it's tough. Mm. Really tough. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I, there, there's almost something that when you when you hear the crowd you hear the announcements you see the judges it's all part of the same thing like you know it's go time and when you go out there to do a run through without the crowd you it kind of feels like it's a a competition practice run through and i feel like your body knows you know it picks up that energy we've been doing i mean after doing it for so many years you know in your gut the difference yeah and i'm and sure then, you know and then that flip. And then one thing that was so important for, you know, competitions is that you get to see your friends that you haven't seen, that you usually see maybe twice a year, once a year. And so, uh, you know, we have some pictures of skaters interacting, but can't interact. Also, you know, uh, yeah, here we have uh, Kirsten and Laurence Fournier-Boudreuil, like fake hugging because you can't actually touch. Um, but, you know, what I like is that Canadians are matching their outfits with their masks, keeping it fashion. Uh, so it's a, it's definitely a weird sense because it's so fun. And like, it was like battle of the blades too, you know, coming to see you, but like not really being able to actually interact or touch or talk or whatever. And having those flashing little things, like back away, <laughs> your friend is dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> your friend is dangerous. <laughs> it's weird. And we're huggy people, figure skaters. We're very huggy people. So it's, yeah. it's, it's hard. <sighs> Weird times, weird times. Times. All right. Um, well, we are going to give our predictions for the free program. The short's done. The free is tomorrow. Let's hear what you think, Eric. What's uh, what's going to go down? I think it's going to be a close. I think it'll be a close competition between Boykova and uh, Schwinhan. I think that the Russians, they just, they have so much competition experience that they're probably more likely to go out and get a clean program. And if they do, they'll win. If Shui and Han can come out and have this spectacular performance, we saw that their, you know, their second mark is, is stronger than the Russians. And that could be the edge. And I think that their, uh, the GOEs are, could, you know, they could get a slight edge on the GOEs as well. So it'll really just come down to the moment and how those two skate. And I think that I think the other Russians, Machina and Galiamov, have kind of they're they're right there. They could they could slip into the top uh, the top two if uh, either one um, you know doesn't perform a strong long program. But uh, I don't know if um, Tarasova and Moraz are going to be able to knock them off that that third place position or off the podium. It's so bizarre to me because, in my opinion, Tarasova and Morozov, look wise, are the only team that should be competing with Swayan Han. You know, they they have that world champion look. They have those qualities. They pay attention. They stretch. They float around the ice. Um, but they just they're plagued with many mistakes that add up. I mean, if they put together a, a, a solid, solid long program, maybe. When I uh, when I was watching. When I was watching, just to add on to what you were saying, when I was watching the, the short programs, like when you watch the initial set of crossovers that a team does, usually coming around the, the twist, and I, I was watching really closely to Machine and Gallimov's like skating skills, and they have they, they have great theatrical choreography, but if you watch very closely at the the skating skills compared to, of course, they're all strong skaters, but then when you watch. Tarasova and Morozov come around the corner and the way they hold their arms, their upper bodies don't move, the position of their heads, like the way that their cross cuts are like perfectly matched. I was like right away, I was just like, wow. And yeah, I, I think you know, I think that should hold more weight. I really do. I think it should hold more weight. Yeah. Do you think Swain Han could win with a mistake? If the other team's clean, then no. Interesting. 
Interesting. Well, it's going to be intense. Um, I mean, hey, what do you think, we have Asher? bigger skater to watch. What do I think? I I just hope everyone has a great time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I for me, my dream podium was uh, to have uh, Kirsten and Mike either second or third, Swan Han, and then um, Boykova and Klavzlovsky uh, in there. Um, just be actually, well, I would I would love to have Morozov in there too, but for some reason they just keep tripping over themselves. They always look so strong. They're clearly the top ones who should be holding up Swayed Han and like they're the ones who should be nipping at them. But it seems like every single time, even with the, the competitions under their belt. So that's that's my answer. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, yeah, let's ask we, the we asked the we asked the fans, like, what's your dream podium? Yeah. Uh so you know, uh we're gonna be we're gonna be touching on that tomorrow. Hopefully we have some good answers from you guys. Um, <clears throat> so send them in <laughs> so we can <laughs> respond to them. <laughs> Get on it. <laughs> Just saying. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, and that will be on uh, Twitter. You can respond to those as well if you guys got those tweeting fingers. Uh, answer, please. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, thank you so much, Eric, for being with us today taking time out of your busy uh music schedule and staring off into mountains that we don't have here uh <laughs> and being inspired um and we are back tomorrow uh with the men's shorts uh it's yuzuru time and nathan chen it's gonna be incredible these two titans going head to head first time this season we love seeing these two phenoms duke it out um and this, and, yeah, that's our daily question. That's our daily question for today. Who's going to do it? Who's going to take another world title? It's going to be fascinating. Let's hear your answers. Um, yes. So thank you, Eric. Uh, you're the best. We love you. It's, and we're going to leave you. so nice with... to see you guys. Oh, thank you. Thank you. You're beautiful. Say it back. <laughs> <laughs> you're beautiful <laughs> thank you so much uh, 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 we're going to be leaving you with this um, me getting some fashion inspo from some skating outfits uh, and we will see you tomorrow for the men's live event uh, what time is that by the way 11.30 uh, 11.30 but he said 11.30 a.m. eastern time she tries it or not. Good girl! Oh, isn't that great? The first time an American, only majority 